Talk to us about the cloud spending environment first. How much room does it have to run on the infrastructure side? You know, I think that during the pandemic over the last two years, a lot of IT organizations really kind of closed down and hunkered down on what they were doing before. And what we're seeing over the last two quarters is that IT organizations are opening back up and they see that the cloud is clearly the future of what they're doing and the future of their network security. And I think that's one of the big reasons why we had a record uh, year in terms of, uh, of growth, 52% year over year, a record quarter, 54% quarter over quarter, and uh, really proud of our entire team. You've made some acquisitions recently, and I'm curious what you think of our Bloomberg reporting that Microsoft is considering a deal to buy the cybersecurity company Mandian. You know, I think that there's a, the cybersecurity space is a big space, and it's something that uh, we're always looking uh, at ways that we can improve, that we can look for uh, great companies that are out there. We have a ton of respect uh, for Mandiant. Kevin has, has built an incredible uh, company and, and really sort of uh, turned around a lot of what was uh, what had happened at FireEye. And so I think that that's a great addition to the ecosystem. Uh, we don't compete directly with them. I think we partner with them in a number of ways. We're already a great partner with Microsoft and looking forward to expanding that partnership going forward. You're not a partner necessarily with Amazon and AWS. I, I've noticed you've taken some shots there. What's the argument for customers to choose Cloudflare over an Amazon? You know, I think Amazon has built an incredible product, but they really haven't innovated for a long time on pricing and especially around bandwidth pricing. What they're doing is they're using um, so what, is, what is a sort of a crazy pricing strategy to keep their customers from being able to try anyone else or experiment or have other innovation. They charge you to take data out of their service, but they don't charge you to put it in. And so it's like the Hotel California of services. And so what we want them to do is follow what other leaders in the space have done like Google and Oracle and Cloudflare and say, we're going to continue to drive down what the price of bandwidth is. And we shouldn't be charging you to take data, your own data out from their, our own systems. Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp went AWOL back in October. I'm curious, you know, you know, you put out a blog post about this, went into detail about what happened. Is it a sign that too much of the internet is in one place? No, I, I don't think that's necessarily true. I think that the, the, the challenge is that the internet was never really built for what we have asked it to do. Uh, 45 years ago, when we were originally putting down the uh, original protocols for the internet, we never imagined that so much of commerce, so much of banking, so much of our lives would be flowing through it. And yet today it, it holds up actually remarkably well. But what we think of at Cloudflare is how, if we had a time machine, could we go back to those 45 years and really reinvent how the, how, how the internet itself worked. And our mission at Cloudflare is to help build a better internet and make sure that no matter what you're doing online, it's fast, reliable, secure, efficient, and private. And I think those are, those are things that everyone needs, even companies like Meta. I got to ask you about tech's favorite buzzword, the metaverse. How big do you think it will really be and will Cloudflare have a role in it? You know, it's, it's hard for me to say uh, how big it will be, um, uh, but we stay on top of all of the, the latest innovations uh, in the crypto space, a huge amount of the crypto universe sits behind Cloudflare. Uh, what all of these new things, whether it's the metaverse or cryptocurrencies or Web 3.0, um, what all of them need is a fast, secure, reliable network. And we've built one of the fastest, most secure, most reliable networks around the world. And I think that's why innovators, regardless of what they're doing, are turning to our platform and to our technology to make sure that they're helping power the future. Last quick question, still looming concern about Log4j and that big cyber vulnerability. What's the status of patching that? Are we still at risk? I think it's it's probably the most significant vulnerability that we've seen over the last five years. We thought it was significant enough that we actually provided patches to all of our customers, even if they didn't pay for our security function. So even if you're a free customer, we patched it. But I think it's, it's going to be one of these things, I describe it, not like a virus or like a worm, which are traditional um, uh, challenges on the cybersecurity space, but almost like a spore, something that's sort of going to linger around for quite some time and might show up in some unusual places. So if you have okay. a system uh, that's out there, make sure you're patching it.